Hi guys, this is Renee Rockwood, also known as Nani Knits. I'm here today to show you this cute little butterfly stitch here. Um, this is going to be featured in a new pattern that I'm working on. I'm really pretty excited about it. It is pretty cute. So, um, there are a couple of different ways that you can do this butterfly stitch. Um, one way is with a crochet hook, which is the method that I'm using right now on these particular socks. And then um, the other way is by pre-stranding all of your beads onto your skein of yarn. Uh, and then that way they're all contained on the strand of yarn. Um, there are benefits and drawbacks to both. Um, one drawback for uh, this particular pattern to stranding it is that you have to carry it all the way up through the foot um, on the ball. Um, for me, that didn't really make sense to do on this particular pattern just because um, I don't have that many beads. So um, the crochet hook method worked, I think, a little bit better for me for these ones. Also, the crochet hook method produces a um, more centered uh, bead. So it's centered on um, the, that middle stitch rather than being on one side or the other um, because you have to put both um, sides of the loop through it. Um, I'll show you how to do that, but, uh, but it's fully centered on this. Um, the problem with that is that you do want to use a little bit bigger beads to get um, it, essentially two widths of yarn through the bead. Um, I happen to be using size 8 beads on this. I think they're a little bit too small for this um, to get both sides of that fingering weight through. You might want to do size 6. Um, now for the stranded method, you're only going to be going through one instance of yarn. So it's not as, you can use smaller beads without it being an issue. Um, so without further ado, this is how we do the butterfly stitch. So um, the previous several rows are worked with these floats across an odd number of stitches. So um, it always is an odd number of stitches, three, five, seven, nine, you know, however long you want these floats to be. Um, and then however many floats you want as well. So um, it doesn't have to be, you know, seven and five, it doesn't have to be five and three, you can do it however, however you want to do it. Um, for this particular pattern, uh, I'm working it across seven, and then I've got five floats upward. Um, so what I do is I work across the first three stitches of my seven. Once I get to the fourth one, I'm going to wait. I'm not going to touch that yet. Um, with my right hand needle, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this right hand needle, and I am going to swoop it underneath all five of those float bars. And again, I'll show you that. You're just going to take this right needle and bring it underneath and up all of those float bars. So then all of those are now on the right hand needle. Um, then you're going to bring that right hand needle into your next stitch to be worked. Um, and then what you're going to do is once you loop this around, you're going to bring that stitch all the way back through underneath those stitches, um, those uh, floats, I should say. Then you can bring the stitch that you've just worked off the needle, and you can see now you get that cute little pinch that makes up that beaded butterfly. Um, so now you'll notice that that is the beaded butterfly, but without the bead. So no bead on there. Um, in order to put the bead on, I like to switch this over onto my left hand needle to grab hold of it. You certainly don't have to. Um, it's all in your preference, but I think because I'm right handed, I, I do like to flip it over there. Um, I'm using, this is just a Clover number 10, um, 0.75 millimeter um, crochet hook. I feel like I might need one slightly bigger than this to work with fingering weight yarn. Um, I had this for when I was working with lace, um, lace weight yarn, and it worked really well, but with this one, I find that I am um, separating my plies a lot, especially trying to get size 8 needles over two um, 
strands of fingering weight yarn. Uh, I'm separating the plies a lot, which, you know, can cause some, some hairiness to your yarn. So, um, I might try a different needle if I were, or a different crochet hook if I were doing this again, but, you know, I'm adventuring and learning as I go. So, I am not a professional beater, uh, as it turns out. Um, I very rarely do beading, but, um, but this was one pattern that called for it, and I, I just really quite liked it, so, um, that's why we're doing this. Uh, so you can see I have my bead here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my bead up onto my crochet hook, and then I'm going to just grab the fingering weight yarn here. Um, I want to make sure I grab as much of it as I can on this teeny tiny little needle. Um, and this is where a more experienced beater would have more, you know, probably have more finesse about what they're doing. But I'm just going to pull that bead over top of that fingering weight yarn. Um, and so you can see here now I have a loop, which will be my stitch. And then it's just laying on that. Once you knit that loop, um, it's going to be secured on there. So we can go ahead and tighten it up and then bring it over to the right hand needle. Um, and now that's ready to be knit on the next round. And you can just go on about your pattern. So work in pattern around until you get to the next, um, next row where you're going to go ahead and knit that. And you're going to want to cinch it kind of tight for um, the, the couple of stitches leading up to and after. Um, so just cinch those stitches nice and tight. And then that is how you do the crochet, crochet hook method. And then I want to show you how to do the stranded method. So I'm going to take this project away and grab another one. Um, this is the beaded butterfly socks and I'll go ahead and link this in the description. Um, this yarn is Yarn Tolly and I really love all the fun colors in it. It's really quite neat. So um, I'm working that on one of Jen's patterns, beaded butterfly socks. Um, and you can see here, let me make sure my camera's focused. Okay, so you can see here um, that the bead is only on one side of the two center stitches that go, well, I guess it's only one center stitch, but it, um, but it appears as two bits of yarn. So it's only on one side. Um, and so that's why I chose not to do it on the, that's one of the reasons that I chose not to do it on, on the, um, the other socks. Um, but oh, I'm getting my crochet hook stuck. It's a little tiny. Um, but I feel like on a pattern like this, where there's more going on, like you don't notice that it's only on one side and it ends up looking really centered because all of these beads just settle themselves really nicely. Um, they nestle themselves kind of into the, um, into the butterfly itself. So I've made my way here to our next butterfly. And you can see here, I have all these beads stranded on my yarn. So um, these beads we pre-stranded before we cast on. And um, you know, you, you just put on as many as you need for one sock and then you're good to go. Um, and so this way it's a lot easier to travel with a project like this if you're doing beading. Um, I probably wouldn't want to travel with the other ones um, because it's just more risk of, you know, dumping beads everywhere and um, having to bring extra tool with you. So um, personally, I probably wouldn't travel with that. When I get focused here, it's not focusing. Okay, there we go. I've got focus now. So um, what you're going to do with the beaded butterfly on this one. So 
um, you can see here that it's only three bars um, and then we've got this we've knit two stitches and we've reached the middle stitch um, this one's worked across five stitches with three um, float bars so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my right hand needle just the same as I did it the last time and I'm going to bring it underneath those float bars and then I'm going to work into my next stitch um, so I'm in my next stitch and I want to have a bead at the ready here um, I don't want to snug it all the way up because then there's no way that I'm going to get it around um, I don't want to have it too far because then it's going to be too far for me to get around um, so I want to have it just close enough where it's probably going to wrap around the needle um, the way that I want it to so once I go into that stitch um, you want that bead to come around the needle and then go through Oop, I've lost it <laughs> okay so um, you want it to go wrap around the needle and then through the stitch itself and it didn't there again so hello through the stitch oh it's fussy okay this one's giving me trouble okay there we go <laughs> let's pretend like I did that the first time through the stitch itself um, and then so you can take that off the needle there and then what you're gonna do is just bring you're just going to bring those three bars so you're going to take your left needle loop them below and bring those three bars over oh my gosh this is giving me too much trouble okay let's try again let's do this all over again okay take two so <laughs> bring that right hand needle underneath those bars um, bring put work into your next stitch bring your bead in through and take that stitch off then with your left needle you're going to go underneath all of those floats and bring it over top of the stitch now you can see this bead is back on the top of my needle if I pull it too tight it'll flip underneath there and then it, it'll be lost um, so we want to make sure that that bead comes to the front side of the needle so that it nestles nice um, down in between the butterfly stitches and then you just go on working in pattern from there um, so again some of the benefits to this way is you know it not being as messy to carry you can bring this along with you um, some people just like having the stranded beads um, in there a lot um, versus carrying the crochet hook so it's all in your own preference whatever you like to do um, and whichever method works best for you that's kind of how I feel about knitting anything you know anything that you want to do whatever way works for you that's why I like to show you a couple of different ways whenever I have the opportunity to so if you have any questions please feel free to reach out if you're curious about this pattern want to know when it's going to be released you can check out my Instagram at Nani Knits um, I should be releasing it well that's got to go through testing um, but sometime soon so um thank you guys so much for watching and i hope you have fun learning the butterfly stitch